Our final session is really going to switch gears a little bit and talk more about technologies. What are interesting technologies that we've seen in general? And we're going to start this conversation with what we call a fire starter, which is a brief presentation from a technology that we found really quite interesting. Dr. Leslie Dewan is the co-founder and CEO of a firm called Transatomic Power Corporation. They've attracted over seven million of Series A funding from venture capital investors, including Peter Thiel's Founders Fund and Daniel Egeter and Armada. And they're focusing on consuming existing stockpiles of nuclear waste dissolved into molten salt. And for those of you who don't understand it like me, we're looking forward to having Leslie explain it to us. Leslie, please join me on stage. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Excellent. All right. I became a nuclear engineer because I'm an environmentalist. I think that we need nuclear power alongside solar and wind and other renewables if we want to meet our carbon reduction goals and avoid the widespread environmental devastation caused by fossil fuels. So I'm going to talk about the hope that I feel for the future of nuclear power in the United States. And to do that, I'm actually going to go back to the very early days of the nuclear industry in the 1950s. So this is the Atoms for Peace truck that was put together by the US Atomic Energy Commission, the uh, predecessor organization to the Department of Energy. And this was a, a bus that drove around the country to, um, to big cities and small towns to teach people about this exciting new technology, about nuclear power. And as you can see, people were lined up at the door to find out more about it. And even Walt Disney got in on this as well. So in 1956, Walt Disney produced a book and accompanying animated feature called Our Friend the Atom. And he sought to demystify the science of nuclear energy, showing that ultimately it's just a fancy way of boiling water to produce steam to power a turbine, while still capturing the inherent wonder that something so small could produce so much power. The resulting um, public optimism ushered in the start of really a golden age for nuclear power. And throughout the 1960s and um, up until the end of the 1970s, new types of nuclear reactors were designed and built at a very rapid rate worldwide. This all ended very abruptly in 1979, when there was a partial meltdown at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. This accident, coupled with the rising costs of nuclear power and concerns about nuclear waste, has uh, slowed the industry's development to this day. But what if, what if we could change this? So what if we could find a way to address the safety and waste and cost concerns and find a way to use the next generation of advanced nuclear technology to make a better source of carbon-free power production. So that is what I'm working on. Um, when my Transatomic co-founder and I were PhD students in nuclear engineering at MIT, we became obsessed with this idea of making a better type of nuclear reactor. And after many years and lots of trial and error, we think we've, we've hit upon something worthwhile. So we've come up with a design for a reactor that can consume existing stockpiles of nuclear waste, and it can't melt down. So to put some numbers on it, we can take all 270,000 metric tons of the world's spent nuclear fuel and use it to produce enough electricity to power the entire world for about 72 years. So you're powering the entire world for 70 years while simultaneously getting rid of almost all of its nuclear waste. The design is actually based on earlier work conducted in the 50s and 60s at the Oak Ridge National Lab in Tennessee. So they developed and prototyped and, and built an operating one of a type of liquid-fueled reactor called a molten salt reactor that was able to run on fresh uranium fuel. And so they showed also that this design had some tremendous safety benefits. So it couldn't melt down, even in the worst-case scenario accident. But the project was very expensive, and eventually the funding got cut 
it couldn't be justified on safety grounds in a world that hadn't yet experienced any significant nuclear accidents. My co-founder and I were able to adapt this design, so we were able to change some of its materials and change its geometry to make it much more compact and power dense and able to consume nuclear waste while still keeping its tremendous safety benefits. So right now we're running some uh, experimental tests of some of the key materials and components in this design so we can get a more finely tuned evaluation of what the overall cost of the system will look like. Uh, so right now some external estimates, even though it's very early days, the external estimates say that we'd be able to build a 520 megawatt electric facility for about $1.5 billion overnight cost. So the total cost per megawatt would be potentially um, about half the cost of conventional nuclear reactors and cheaper than coal. And we actually picked this 520 megawatt electric size so that these reactors could serve as a, uh, a replacement for the coal power plants that are coming offline in the US in the coming decades and serve as an alternative for the coal power plants that are going to be built worldwide. And I think the cost estimates, or the cost of this plant is one of the most important pieces for this because if you're going to build nuclear at scale worldwide, they, the plants have to be cheaper than, than coal. They have to be cheaper than um, the other fossil fuel alternatives. You have to make sure that people's economic incentives are in line with what's good for the environment. So, um, we're backed by Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, among others, and we have a great team uh, and a wonderful group of technical advisors, including the former CTO of Westinghouse, uh, former head of MIT's nuclear engineering department as well. Um, one of the other things I want to emphasize is that it's not, just, it's not just my company, it's not just Transatomic. There's an immense number of advanced nuclear reactor design companies that are, that are starting up in the US and worldwide. So, Right now, there are actually 43 independent advanced reactor design efforts going on, and they've collectively raised about $1.6 billion in private investment. So it's a tremendously exciting time, um, especially to be a young person in the industry. So just to close it up, um, moving the world to a new form of power generation, especially one with as much baggage as atomic power, is no small task. It's going to take years of testing and building and broad social and political support to, to bring this to fruition. And so I'm committed to making this vision a reality, and I hope you all join me in this quest. Thank you so much.